Well, I'd like to welcome all the chess publishing crowd out there. Um, this is the second video I'm going to do for the chess publishing forum for my friend Tony Coston and for everyone else watching. And what we're going to concentrate on this video is the winnerware French. Um, now, this is an opening to French defence that I have played for most of my life. I have written a number of books on it, also two DVDs for my company, Ginger GM, which are on sale now in the shop or dropped price. Um, and what I'm going to try to do with this video, I'm going to try to give you an overview of really the main line, Poison Pawn, Winnerware French, but I'm also going to quickly look at the other moves. So I'm really giving you a sort of 15, 20 minute lesson here on the winner where French, mainly from a black perspective. So if you're playing with the black pieces and after this video, hopefully you feel a little bit confident or really you may learn a new opening here with black, how to play the winner where French. So I'm gonna try to include most of the sort of work I've done over my past 20 years in a very condensed matter here. Now, obviously I'm not gonna go into real deep theoretical lines i suggest you look on the chess publishing forum and the chess publishing notes from our you know the great um, authors you have here for more detailed analysis but i'm just going to verbally and for the use of diagrams try to show you the main ideas in the winner where french just i mean chess publishing is a great way to learn but i think a lot of people would like to know the ideas behind the opening and this is what i'm aiming to do with these videos but um, I'm hoping my experience and the work I've done on this opening will um, increase your knowledge and I can sort of pass it over to you here. Um, so again, yeah, the French defence um, starts with the moves d4, d5, of course. And now we're going to concentrate mainly on knight to c3, bishop to b4 here. And this opening, um, first analysed by Winnerware, has been a major battleground in the French defence for the French defence, life really, the life of the opening. Um, Botvinnik played this on a numerous basis, so did Petrosian, loads of other great players, and nowadays Richard Report um, plays it and other, other top players. So it's a really interesting opening, leads to very dynamic and double-edged positions. It's a great way to play for a win with black uh, against 1e4 and the winner wear. Now to start with, let me just mention knight to f6 very briefly. This is, I guess, more commonly seen nowadays at top level, and it's slightly less risky than bishop to b4. White has two options here, bishop to g5 and also e5. Now, e5, I think, is considered the main line. Against bishop g5, if you insist on playing this knight to f6 move, then I would um, suggest you look at um, an idea of Morzevich, which is taken on e4, and then playing bishop to e7, and after bishop takes f6, g takes f6. This is an extremely interesting line, and the main variation Morozay, which made popular, was with knight to f3, and then a6, and b5 comes and f5, leading to dynamic positions. Actually, the, the reason I don't play this often is because of the move queen to d3 here, um, which is a little sideline, but I still think this is very dangerous to black, with the queen coming to g3 and g7. But that might be something you could uh, be, you know, if you want to investigate if you're not so happy with the main lines I'm going to show here. Um, after knight to f6, e5, you get these kind of typical French defence positions where black aims to hit out with the move c5. And the whole battle here really revolves around whether the d4 square can drop at the right moment and whether black gets enough play on the queen side. But we're going to be concentrating on bishop to b4 in this video and uh, this is like i said one of the most exciting lines in the winnerware french now here e5 is really the main idea and what we're going to concentrate most on i would want to mention i want to mention the move a3 very quickly now a while back maybe even eight years ago i tipped that this move would become more and more popular and it now seems to be becoming more and more popular um now, as John Watson has looked at in the French defence section, one of the most interesting replies to this is taking, and then you should take on e4. White's main idea is queen g4, and after the natural sequence, knight to f6, queen takes g7, rook g8, queen to queen to h6, my mistake there, 
um, we play the move bishop to d7. And this is uh, one thing that uh, I think I suggest you look at in the archives. Um, but okay, the main move is e5. And this is what you're going to face a number of times. So already we can talk very briefly about this position. Now, I think it's fair to say that White's main play, because of his pawn on e5, is on the king side. And White will often play moves like queen to g4 and pressurize the dark squares on the queen side, on the king side. Now, Black's main play is on the queen side. And Black, the move we're going to concentrate on is the poison pawn variation, and that is with c5. And Black often tries to rely heavily on queen side play here. So it's really a battle between queen side tactical play and king side tactical play from white. This is why we get very sharp positions. Now, the suggested move order I'm going to give is knight to e7 here. Now, it's worth noting you can also get similar positions with pawn to c5, a3, taken on c3, and queen to c7. Now, I prefer to move knight to e7 here for two main reasons. Number one, black's not committed to playing c5. So if white plays bishop to d2 here, which is quite a popular line, black doesn't have to play c5, uh, allowing knight to b5, very theoretical line. Instead, black can play b6 with the idea of swapping off these light square bishops of bishop to a6. And this idea is, is really worth thinking about. One, one problem you'll get in the French defence in general is your bishop on c8. This bishop on c8 is often a really bad piece because it's stuck behind your pawns. And white's best minor piece is his bishop on d3. This bishop can be very annoying when it comes to uh, d3 and then attacks on h7. We'll, we'll find this especially true if black castles kingside. So the move b6 followed by bishop to a6 is a nice idea just to try to swap off your worst minor piece for white's best minor piece. And I think it works very well in this position. But after knight to e7, um, a3 is the main move. Now, another reason I like knight to e7 is because if white's not paying attention, he could go queen to g4 here thinking that he's reached a mainline position. But this is slightly different now because black has the possibility of going c5 and he wants to meet and move a3 with queen to a5. And this is a possibility doesn't get a normal main line. For example, queen takes g7 and now, well, rook g8, queen takes h7. And if we take on d4, white may think he's okay because he's got a3. But in actual fact, he's got a lost position after queen to a5. And this is very good for black. The same is true after queen g4. And now a3 here. Sorry, c5, a3. And queen to a5 here is good. So it's a slightly interesting move order, this. And the move order I'd recommend you play, knight to e7. Well, the main move is a3 here. And now black should take on c3 and b takes c3 is played. And again, just quickly talking about the pawn structure, white is weak on c3 here. And this is a, a pawn that black should aim to attack. But black is weak on g7. So it's kind of a double-edged position. The, move, the kind of plan I'm recommending for black now is to go c5. And depending on white's reply, against queen g4, we're going to go for the poison pawn variation. But pretty much against every other reply after c5, so let's put c5 on the board here. So any other plan that white plays, except for queen g4, which is clearly critical, black is aiming to go knight to c6, queen to a5, bishop to d7, castles queenside, and f6 eventually. So this is your general plan, and I just want to you know try to make things as simple as I can for you as the viewer who might not. Be, might, might not have an experience with this opening. So this is what I'm suggesting you play. I mean, if queen g4, we're going to have a look at that soon. But against other variations, I want you just to finish your queen side development. So bring your knight out, bring your bishop out, pressurize c3, and then get your king on the queen side, where it's most safe, because the king is safe on c8, because uh, you have this pawn structure here, which is hard to break down. And then a very important move that gains you active play, f6. So once you've finished all your development, f6 
to either open up the F file or if white decides to capture on F6 when you recapture with a pawn, you open up the G file. So this is your general plan. I mean, okay, let's just show this in, in motion against knight to F3, which you might face a lot at club level. Well, we go knight to C6, and now most players play bishop to D3 here, but already I consider this a mistake because we can go queen to A5, attacking C3, bishop to D2. And in this particular variation, I think you should close down the queen side immediately. White might be threatening to go C4 here, so we go C4 first, closing the queen side down, and now we do our first stage of our plan, which is completing our development to get in our king castle queen side. So bishop d7, both sides castle, but we castle queen side, and then we play the move that gives us dynamic play, f6. And there's been a number of games in this, but I think this gives black extremely good play, uh, and I'd be very comfortable playing this. So we're mainly going to concentrate on the move queen to g4 here um, in this main position. And this is, I think, the only way that white can aim to gain a good, stable advantage. But it's not clear he can anyway. There are a number of moves against this. Um, I'm going to concentrate on the move queen to c7, the poison pawn variation. The other main move is castle's king side. But I don't like this so much because if you play this line, the, the game takes a different nature. You've committed your king to the king side and now the game kind of revolves around whether white can checkmate you on the king side with all his pieces aimed at your king and you can defend and then counter attack um that's what it revolves around really so you have to defend a lot and you know when i play the french i want to play it in the most aggressive way possible so i've always preferred the move queen to c7 counter attacking against c3 immediately now white's main line is queen takes g7 and here we have to go rook g8 and now queen takes h7 and now black starts to counterattack immediately with pawn takes d4. Threatening queen takes c3 here which would win a rook so white must do something about that. Now knight to e2 is the main move. Um, king to d1 was popular for a while but I think uh, black should be very safe here. I mean, the king is not necessarily safe on d1. It's just a way to avoid this this move. And generally, against other main moves, what black's main idea is really to aim for e5 and develop sensibly. I mean, you could take on c3 here first, but I'd probably prefer to go knight c6 first. I mean, it leads to the same sort of thing. And white's main idea with the king on d1 is to try to attack f7. So white goes knight to f3. Now we take on c3 and knight to g5. Um, and here you can take both the knight and the queen on e5. I prefer actually queen takes e5, allowing white to take on f7 with check. Now these lines might be very complicated and you know you could play this video a couple of times to get a good overview of the opening. But you know the general ideas are if, if, if white plays a strange move like king to d1, you should just try to take as many things as possible, develop your pieces and pressurize e5. So against rather peculiar moves, try to win the pawn on e5 and just capture and just play sensible chess. I mean, one typical thing that black aims for once he's taken the pawn on e5, so let's say after queen takes e5, queen takes s7, and now king d7 is actually best. The king is actually fairly safe behind these two pawns here, and the white king is quite exposed. Now one main idea black tries to do in this type of position at some stage is to play e5, move the king to c7, and bring the bishop into the game. So, you know, a plan of something like queen d4 check in e5 makes a lot of sense here. Um, this is the kind of thing you're aiming for. But if we go back um, to the position where we take on d4, knight to e2 is clearly the main move. Now, d takes c3 is my preferred move order here, immediately taking the pawn on c3, and this, this gives black more options. And now f4 is the best move, defending e5, the pawn on e5, uh, this one here. Um, now, if queen to d3 immediately, I actually think you can take on e5 straight away. And after queen takes c3, I think queen to e4 is good. Now, another bit of advice, if you're offered, ever offered a queen exchange like this in this type of positions, I mean, you can take the queens off, but I always think the white king is in more danger than the black king. And for that reason, I like keeping the queens on the board. 
I mean, another problem is if you exchange queens off, then white's h-pawn, which is often his main trump in the poison pawn variation, tends to become a lot stronger because the threats against his king are, are less dangerous. So this h-pawn is something to watch out for. So in this kind of position, I'd keep the queens on the board, something like queen to e4. And now let's say white goes h4. Let's go for this thematic move here, e5. Remember this thematic move. If you get a chance to put both your pawns on e5 and d5, it's what you should do. So this is very, very thematic idea. Um, so we go, uh, we get the position after f4. Um, now the main move we're concentrating is knight c, uh, sorry, f4, knight c6. Finish our development. And now queen to d3, d4. Now, an interesting little sideline, if you want to avoid the complex theory and you're just starting out this, this uh, opening with black, I think a very good line you could go for is after f4, you could actually go for bishop to d7. Now, this waits for the development of your knight on b8. And the point is, after knight, queen to d3, you can play knight to a6. And this, I think, is, is actually currently about equal theoretically and not as theoretically studied as some of the other lines. If you have a look at the game in the archives of Sophie Millet versus Nick Pert, you'll, you'll get an understanding of this, uh, this, this variation a lot better. So this is a decent sideline. But after f4, um, knight bt6, queen d3, we're concentrating mainly on the move d4 here. And this is very trendy at the moment, and it looks like a very interesting option. Now, I'm just, again, not going to look at this so deeply in the video, but give you the main ideas. Well, I think white should really take on d4 here. Um, I don't believe any other options for white are going to give white any kind of advantage. If white doesn't take on this square, let's say he plays something like, I don't know, um, h4, which has been suggested, well, then we can even Fianchetto our bishop, but we're really mainly just trying to simply develop as quickly as possible, put our king on the queen side here, and in some positions we can even sacrifice on e5. It always seems to me in this type of position that black's pawns on d4 and c3 are so strong, and if allowed to stay in these two squares, black has a very nice initiative. I mean, there's one game I was looking at here, and I think uh, Emmanuel Berg, the great French expert, also gave this variation. It's with b6 immediately. Black tries to put his bishop on the best diagonal. Clearly better here than on d7. Let's say white continues with h5. We put our bishop on this diagonal. h6. Now we get our king castled. h7. Rook h8. And now after something like knight to g3, knight to g6. Which is Emmanuel Berg and Houdini's first choice. And really the idea here is we're going to sacrifice on e5 or one of our knights next, bring our queen to e5 for a check, and we're going to have a massive pawn formation, leaving us a very good play. Again, you have to take my word for it. This is a very good plan. So d4, the only critical line, in my opinion, is knight takes d4. And in this line, the old variation, which is worth pointing out, was actually with knight to f5 here instead of d4, where black sacrifices the c pawn, rather than the d pawn. Now, in my opinion, it's better to go for the sacrifice of the d pawn. So after knight takes d4, we take on d4. I think this for a couple of reasons. I think it's better to have the c pawn. This is more of a fawn in white side. Black can quickly aim to go bishop d7 and get his rook to the d file. So now we have this open d file for a rook. And it just seems to offer black very good play. Now, the main ideas you're trying to do here for black in this position you are a pawn down but what you want to do is finish your development with bishop d7 and castles you want to bring your knight to very good squares knight to f5 comes in attacking the queen and then you have to decide what piece you put on c6 this is one interesting moment you can either put the bishop on c6 which is quite good or in some cases you can put the queen on c6 so we'll have a look at this, what piece you should put on c6 in more detail in a second. It really depends on what white plays. Now you should play bishop to d7 first here. This is to stop a bishop to b5 check. So you should do this. I mean, knight to f5 is not going to run away anywhere. And here white has two main options. He can either go rook g1. And the idea behind this is to push forwards g4, um, which makes a lot of sense. 
And the other main move here is rook b1. Now, let me just talk about both moves very quickly. Well, I mean, rook g1 is aimed against black going knight to f5. When black goes knight to f5, white, with the move rook g1, wants to go g4. And if he plays g4 before, you know, before any of these moves, well, it's very hard to achieve this, this advance g4 because um, the rook, black's rook on g8, will just take the pawn and white's rook on h1 becomes exposed on this diagonal. So the move rook to g1 here is really trying to prepare g4 um, and get off the black bishop diagonal. So this, to me, seems critical. Now, if rook to b1... I think this is not quite as good as rook to g1. And um, against this move, I think um, we can even consider, after knight to f5, queen to f2, we can even consider queen to f c6 here. But as a rule, again, I think bishop to c6 is our preferred setup. And, I mean, one thing, just to keep things simple, in this position, um, against any kind of move, I think what you're trying to do for black is to go knight to f5, let me just get some of this paint off the board. So let's say rook g1. We want to go knight to f5. And generally, with the rook on g1, we put our queen on c6. Now, if white had played rook b1, we put our bishop on c6. So this is just a little rule worth remembering. In this critical position we have here, after bishop d7, let me just get some of these uh, this paint, this colour off the board, because it's uh, clogging things up a little bit. But... Let's just think about it. So if white goes rook to g1, we go knight to f5 and queen c6. If white plays rook to b1, we go knight to f5 and bishop to c6. This is the only slight change, I, I, you know, the only thing I'd, uh, I'd say here. Now let's just have a look at one line after rook to g1. Well, knight to f5, queen to f2, and now following our plan, queen to c6 is critical. Now why not bishop to c6 here? Well, if bishop to c6, white is able to fulfill his plan with g4. And then our knight always wants to move forwards in these type of positions. This is something worth remembering. If we have to ever have to retreat our knight after g4, we're just going to be worse. And we, we have to retreat our knight here. Now, the main difference with queen c6 is that if uh, white ever tries something like this here, well, then we can always consider going something like queen to e4 check at some stage and our knights then as a possibility of jumping into d4 at the right stage um i mean the main move after queen c6 because given a chance you do want to go queen e4 check is bishop to d3 now the typical plan here is queen to d5 and this prepares to put our bishop on c6 in this position uh, offering good play now i think just to not overcomplicate things, I mean, in the PGN I've attached, I've attached much more deep analysis so you can look at the PGN. I mean, I think I will stop here because i just briefly talk about this position. I mean, black has sacrificed a pawn. Theoretically speaking, it now seems that black has enough compensation for this pawn because of his active play on the light squares after bishop c6. The potential is knight to come to d4, black castling king, queen side. So black does have enough play theoretically at the moment it leads to a very interesting position i mean remember the white king is always stuck on e1 here so it's always going to be a target little tips here try to avoid exchanging queens because obviously then white's bishops and his h pawn will become safer and his king is a lot less weak you've got to go for active play in this type of position um as actively as possible so castling knight to d4 and it's really just active play um so let's just have a recap of this poison pawn variation and the line I'm recommending here. Um, and please see my notes to this to get more detailed analysis. We can only cover so much in uh, a, a video. So after knight c3, we're going for bishop b4. Um, now we're concentrating on e5 when I recommend the move order knight to e7. Now against bishop to d2 or maybe other moves which are not critical, so other moves where white does not play the move a3, I would suggest you now you would go for a positional variation. So bishop d2, I would suggest now you play b6 here and try to swap off your worst piece, the light squared bishop, for white's best piece, his light squared bishop. Now against the critical move a3, 
we take on c3 and we dive straight into the main line with c5. Now in the French defence you have to you have to really rely on two pawn breaks, c5 and f6. In the winner where you're mainly relying on c5, and that's exactly what you do here. Now in this position, after the move c5, um, it really depends on what white plays, but we're mainly concentrating on queen g4. Now, if white does not play the move queen g4 here, can you remember what you should play? Well, against most other replies, you should finish your queenside development, try to castle your, queen, your king queenside, get your queen to a5, and eventually play f6. I mean, let's just show another variation when that works. Even h4, finish your development, attack c3, and castle queenside, and then try to play f6. How do you play f6 in this position? Well, you can actually play it with a rather peculiar move, knight g8 and f6, blowing the center up. So this is just my basic plan to simplify things if white does not play queen to g4. Now, if he does play queen to g4, I recommend we allow him to take on g7 and we counter it by taking on c3. So queen c7, the poison pawn line, and after queen takes g7, we take on d4. After the main line, knight to e2, we take on c3 immediately with our pawn, and then f4. And here, well, if you want to avoid a lot of theory, you can try Nick Pert's idea of bishop d7 and knight a6. Very interesting idea. If you want to go for the main line, knight b c6 is, um, uh, sorry, let me just get the position. Knight b c6, queen d3. And after this move, queen d3, we want to play d4. And d4 leads to the sacrifice of our d pawn. And after knight takes d4, we take it off. Go bishop d7 first to stop, bishop to b5 check. And here, simple things to remember is that against rook to g1, you want to go knight f5, queen to c6. Against rook to b1, you want to go knight to f5, bishop to c6. Your main idea is to go knight to f5, maybe something like queen c6, maybe queen e4. Or bishop c6, bishop d5. Try to get both your queen and your bishop on this diagonal. Castle queen side, go for active play and try to checkmate your opponent. Now again, the PGM will explain this in more detail. I think I'll leave it there. It's just an overview of the win aware for anyone who's interested in picking it up. For looking at this uh, opening, we could go on about this for ages. This video is only so, so long. So I hope that gives you a nice taster if you come into this opening fresh. If you want to look at this in more detail, there's some great notes on the forum. I've included some interesting ideas um, to the PGN to this game. If you want to have a, a, a look at some DVDs that give you a great um, introduction to this, go to gingergm.com. And my at the moment, um, the Killer French DVD 1 and 2, which is something like, I believe, 10 hours of footage, you can buy both these DVDs for the price, I believe, of £20. So very, very cheap to get this, um, get all the knowledge there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave your suggestions for other videos in the future. Um, and thank you very much for watching this video.